so today's video is going to be something slightly different. I'm going to do some fire lighting and I'm going to cook up a bit of food because why not if there's a fire I might as well throw some food on it. I'm going to be using some of this dead dried bracken. So I've just noticed this birch and what I'm going to do is I'm going to help myself to a few of these little bits that are almost falling off the tree trunk and I'm going to put them into my tinder bundle because I think these will be really helpful when it comes to blowing this ember into a flame. So first things first, I need a tinder bundle. So as you've just seen, I've collected some tinder and now we just need to create our ember and drop it in. Once we drop the ember in, we're then going to blow this into a flame and then it'll be time to cook up some food. So the fire lighting is going to be some friction fire but friction fire that you might not have seen before. I've been lighting fires like this for the last few years and you know what? It's a great alternative method of fire lighting. Anyone can do this, it's dead easy. So this here, this is a pig nut. What we're after is the nut which is buried down in the ground. To do that, we need a small stick like this and some very careful excavating. The thing about these nuts is that if you were to pull the stem, hoping to, to reveal the nut, what would happen is because the stem is so fragile, the stem would snap off, leaving the nut in the ground and it'd be quite hard to find. That's why we use the stick. These nuts can be anything up to a, a few inches down into the ground. And you just have to be really careful, careful, gentle excavating, and eventually you'll find the nut. So you can see how long and fragile these stems are. So now the nut should be somewhere in here. So there we are. There's our pig nut. And this is the nut covered in soil. A great way to identify these is the finger-like leaves. You remember, this was in the ground about there, so I've had to dig down a good few inches to reveal the nut. Give it a little clean in my hands, and this is what we're after, the pig nut. I love these. What you can do is roast them in a pan and they taste incredible. Maybe a bit of sugar, maybe just some salt, maybe some honey. They're really good. The easiest way is to, using a saw or maybe an axe, is to shape a piece of wood into a paddle or a spade and it will allow you to dig quite easily to find the pig nut. Well, well, we're not here for pig nuts. We're here for something slightly different, so let's continue. So I think this is where I'm going to light my fire. First thing I need to do is make a small clearing. I 
Well, there's no shortage of sticks here, and my favourite place to look for some dried sticks for fire lighting is not on the ground, it's up in the air, suspended, wind dried amongst the branches. Remember, a good practice when bushcrafting is leave no trace. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sort through all of my dried sticks to separate them into different grades. Here we are, a small handful of pencil leads. Now I'm going to try and gather some thicker ones, something between a pencil lead and the thickness of a pencil. So once I've graded all of these sticks, it'll then be time to light the fire. Pencil leads, something between pencil leads and pencils, and pencils. And here's our area where we're going to light the fire. So there's a few things we need for this fire lighting. The first one is our first aid kit. And the second thing we need is some wood. It doesn't have to be any particular wood. In fact, using an axe and a saw, you could make this when you're out in the wild from scratch. I've just brought these along with me from home. So remember, we need some wood and our first aid kit. What I always have in my first aid kit is some cotton wool. So I've taken some cotton wool out of my first aid kit. I now stick the cotton wool back in here, put that away. The next thing we need is some ash. That's right, any old ash, just some wood ash from the fire. This could be, so this could be left over from last night's fire. Remember, the fire's gone out, we've woken up, we might have lost our fire steel, we might have burnt our bow drill kit. There's lots of scenarios where this fire lighting can come in very useful. Just to recap, we need some wood, we need some cotton wool, and we need some ash. When it comes to ash, this really is just, just some ash from the fire from a few days ago. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this cotton wool and just fluff it up, open it up, to get quite a large surface area, like this. Now the next thing is to take some of this ash. Whoops, I've just spilt a bit. So we take a little bit of ash and we sprinkle some ash onto the cotton wool. Put the lid on, put the ash away. Now, very carefully roll this up as tight as possible. So there we are, once you've rolled up a few times, just roll it a few times with your hand, like this. There we are. So now we've got a nice, dense, compact piece of cotton wool with some wood ash inside that dense cotton wool. And then we roll it forwards a few times and that helps lock in all those fibres nice and dense. Now what we do is we do this for about 30 seconds. And we're going to And there we are. So as you can see, there really are no tricks to this. It's just a piece of cotton wool, some ash sprinkled on, roll it really hard, really tight, really fast, and eventually you end up with a smouldering ember. This works by the friction inside that dense cotton wool, those small particles of ash with maybe some charcoal as well to give it some grit. They roll together, they rub together, the heat generated creates a lovely ember. So to take this ember into a flame, I've got my pre-prepared tinder bundle. Remember, I've got some birch bark in there as well. 
not something I usually do, but I know this will help. And I'll take my smouldering ember, and I'll just place it, there's a bit more there, I'll place it into my tinder bundle, and now I'm thinking about where I am. Okay, the fire's right there, I've got my sticks pre-graded right next to the fire, as soon as this goes up into a flame, I'm going to drop it into my fire pit, put my sticks on, small to begin with, working medium, then large, and then we'll have a nice roaring fire. This method is called the Rudiger Roll, or it's otherwise known as the Fire Roll. Personally, I think this is the easiest way of creating fire by friction. Anyone can do this. If you have a fire pit at home, if you have a wood burning stove, or if you've got an old barbecue with some ash in the bottom, then give this a try. Find some wood, find some cotton wool, take some of the ash, try it for yourselves. It really is easy. I'm now going to fold this in half, like that. And there we have it. And there we are, fire. It really is easy. Give it a try. So now it's time for my favorite part cooking up some food. So for the food we're going to need two skewers or two sticks of hazel. And there's hazel everywhere in this bit of woodland. I'm looking for something about the, as thick as your finger. The best thing about hazel is that it grows straight and it's great for cooking. That's one, we need two. So while I'm waiting for this fire to get nice and hot and for the wood to burn down into nice smouldering embers, great for cooking on, I'll just prepare a few of these sticks that I collected earlier. So I'll just show you this knife. So this is my new knife. It's got a slight recurve on it. It's 01 tool steel. It's got a stabilized curly birch handle. The blade is 95 millimeters long. The bolster and end cap is made of brass. You can see there it's been hammered. This is craftsmanship at its finest. So I think I'll be featuring this knife in the next few videos. I've never, I've never used a knife with a slight recurve. So I'll see how we get on. As for the sheath, it's vegetable tanned leather with a friction fit. A local knife maker reached out and offered me one of these knives. So I just want to say to Josh, the knife maker, thank you very much. Right, back to cooking. So, food wise, today we're having hot dogs. Yep hot dogs.
I've just placed a little bit of butter in the pan. You know, cooking food in the woods doesn't have to be complicated. You don't need to cook up amazing food. You'll be surprised at how tasty a few simple and basic ingredients will become. In this case, a couple of onions, a couple of sausages. I've got some hot dog rolls. That's pretty much it. But I'll guarantee you one thing, cooking food outdoors in the woods tastes so much better. So for those that are regular viewers, you might have seen me talk about bowls and bowl turning. Well, this is a recent bowl that I turned and this bowl was turned out of a piece of sycamore. What I've done on the base of this is I've engraved Amber's paw print. As I mentioned in the past, if you want to be in for a chance in winning one of these bowls, I suggest you click the notification button because every so often I'll do a live stream where I'll be turning these bowls. I've already selected the winner for this bowl and this one's going to America. In fact, I think it's going to Florida. So here we are. Simple food, extra tasty, especially when you eat it in the woods. It's now time to enjoy this. Well, I mean it when I say it. Food always tastes better in the woods. Well, if you've made it this far, thanks for watching, and please hit that subscribe button. There'll be plenty more videos to come very soon. Well guys, that's pretty much it for me and for today. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Remember that fire lighting trick called the fire roll or the Rudiger roll. Remember, two pieces of wood, some cotton wool, a bit of ash, roll them together, count to 20, count to 30, and there you are, smouldering ember. Stick that into your tinder bundle, blow that into a flame. Really easy and great fun. I guarantee you, your neighbor won't know that trick. So if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. And for those that are regulars, thank you very much for watching. I'll be back soon. I'm not sure when, but it'll definitely be another irregular upload. So until then, from myself and Amber, goodbye. And remember, leave no trace. Come on then. <laughs>